Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Sam. The Bean's taking a nap, so you probably won't hear him today. And we are building the Dutch Colonial. I am building in Brindleton Bay, which is the world that came with the Cats and Dogs pack, and the Dutch Colonial and or Dutch Colonial influenced build style is the most prevalent in this world, so it seemed like a good place to build today. I will be using the Cats and Dogs pack, but this build is totally doable with just the base game as well, so I hope you follow along whether you have the pack or not. The Dutch Colonial was originally brought to the States by settlers from the Netherlands in the early and mid 1600s. While it has had its ups and downs in popularity, it is undoubtedly one of the most recognizable colonial home styles. The broad gambrel or barn roof is the main attraction. This roof may or may not have curved eaves, a wide overhang, and a single broad centralized dormer. This roof line allowed the upper story to have far more usable space than other styles that also had a partial upper story, like the Cape Cod, but still not have so much space that it could be taxed as a two-story home. As the Dutch are historically known for the masonry, it should be no surprise these homes were originally made of brick and stone, although now nearly any material can be used. The very first homes were one room deep, two or three rooms wide, and chimneys were typically placed at or near either end. Unfortunately, we do not have Dutch doors in this game, but if we did, using one for the front door would be most iconic. Over the centuries, as lifestyles changed and the nation expanded, so did these homes. To this day, they still maintain that classic roofline, although symmetry, room orientation, and fireplace placement are slightly less important. Windows are typically still shuttered, although now more for style than function, and big porches are common. You can find Dutch colonial revival and influenced homes ranging from tiny cottages to massive mansions. I'll be doing my best to stick closely to the Dutch colonial roots today, although the same roof and other main elements can be found in many other home styles like craftsman or even neoclassical. You can find Dutch colonial and Dutch influenced homes, as well as the references I used for today's video, on the printer's board linked in the video description. I'm building in the Cats and Dogs World Brindleton Bay today because it has a lot of Dutch colonial influence, and I'm building on a 20 by 20 lot. My build today is going to be on the smaller side, but if you want to build anything larger, similar concepts, you can just sort of scale up the build, add a few tiles either side to start expanding the space. You can always add on to the sides. I'm going to start with a 10 by 11 rectangle, 11 this way and 10 this way. Then over on this side, I'm going to go in two tiles from either side and make a little three wide room like this. I'm gonna turn that into a little sunroom. And I am using medium wall height on my lower floor today just because I think it looks better with the way the roof turns out. Now, the really important thing about the Dutch Colonial is of course that gambrel roof. Gambrel roof? I should really look these things up before I start recording. Anyway, the main thing you want to do here is make sure that your next story is two tiles in from the edge. So we're just gonna start with one room that lines up on these sides that match the direction of our eave or um, of the peak of our roof and two tiles in from the sides because the peak of our roof will be running this way so we want to make sure that we have um, our room running the same direction and then if you want to add that classic wide dormer I'm going to be putting mine in two from either side like this and this can be all the way to the edge of your roof or it can be in one um, just kind of depends on your overall look that you want to go for occasionally the dormers will be split up um, more like what we've seen in the Georgian or the Cape Cod colonials, but for the most part they're going to be quite wide. Again, tax evasion. Now for some walls downstairs, I'm going to split this not quite into thirds. Um, my middle section will be three tiles wide, and then on either side there will be four tiles. I'm going to split this room in half, so this will be a dining room and a kitchen. Kitchen on the back as usual. I'm actually going to put a bathroom at the end of the hall right here. This is going to be a living room, and I'm going to add a little entry, sort of entryway here. And because it's going to be easier to add the stairs before we add the rooms on the second story, we'll do that now. So I'm going to actually manipulate my stairs out here. If I rotate it this way and then delete the underside, so that'll be three tiles this way and three tiles this way, I can move it into my house like this and then actually add a bathroom door right here under the stairs. No move objects on or anything. You can see I can't actually place it anywhere else. Um, but you can have a door under the stairs if you have the medium ball height, which is cool. Now we can draw some rooms upstairs. I'm going to start with a three wide bedroom over on this side, a little three by three bathroom over here. I'm going to add a wall here to make sort of a funky shaped bedroom at the front and a little four by three bedroom back here. These bedrooms are not huge um, and this will just be a shared bathroom for everyone upstairs. But again, if you're just, if you like the layout, but you just want it to be bigger, just extend one or two tiles in any direction. Like if you had a box and you just sort of like sized it up, you know, you'll figure it out. I have confidence in you. Next up, I'm going to add my sort of deck areas. I'm going to add a small entry porch here. Uh, this could be much wider or it could be quite small. I'm going to go with small here and then we'll do wider on the sides. So I'm gonna add a little one right here and then a whole three tile deep porch off the back. 
Now this could be on no foundation or it could be as high as maybe three, although one to two is going to be the most common. And let's talk about this roof. I'm going to start with a half gable over on this side. I do want to hold shift to pull this eave in one, and then I'm going to hold alt to maintain the same height of the roof and adjust the pitch so that when I push it in, it still lines up. From here, I'll just pull my roof piece over. And if you want to add any sort of curve, select your roof piece, hit shift C, and you can use this little ball thing here to curve off the end of your eave. You'll get a much more dramatic look if you actually extend it a little bit more. And then depending on your reference image or just the overall style that you want to go for, you can curve the middle portion of your roof as well, up or down. Once you have that roof piece looking how you want it, copy it and place it on the back. You could also add a dormer on the back, I just didn't. Um, and then we're going to grab a gable for the top. Once again, pulling in these eaves, and then we're going to drop the pitch a bit. And if you want to curve this, same deal, shift C. I like to use this one um, toward the top to get it nice and round at the top. And then you can pitch this one a little bit as well. And that'll give you sort of that curved roof. Again, you don't have to curve your roof. It's totally up to you, but that's how you do it if you want to. I'm going to copy the same roof piece to place up here, pull it into the roof a bit and then pitch it down. Now, if we want to roof our wraparound deck, we're actually going to start on this sunroom here and pull this all the way out to the edge of our deck pitch it down a bit. And if you want to curve this roof piece, it's going to be easiest to just stick with um, a very simple sort of curving that you know you can replicate easily. So I may want to just like bring this little ball up one. So that gives it a little bit of a curve, but it's easy to replicate when I grab my half gable roof. And if you're still struggling to get it to line up, you can hold alt to adjust the pitch a little bit more carefully. If you want to get rid of this sort of eave over here, you can just push it in. And that's basically how we're going to roof that wraparound deck. One last roof piece we have to decide if we want to add is a sort of cover for that front entry. This could be another half gable, but it's quite traditional to actually have a very curved piece of roof here. So I'm going to do shift C again, and then bring this all the way up, bring this up a bit, and then just pull my eaves down and adjust the pitch until it lines up pretty well with the roof pieces around it. So that's quite traditional to have that sort of rounded roof piece there, um, but again, this home style has been around for hundreds of years, so it's seen a lot of changes. Uh, pretty much anything you do, so long as you keep the same general silhouette, you're going to be fine. Now with that being said, typically the Dutch are only two stories, however, if you want to do three stories and do more of a Dutch inspired, um, you would basically just take what is our top story here and move it up a level and then do plain old walls on the level above. So it'll end up looking much like a Georgian, just with a fancier roof. All right, next up we can talk about windows. Like every other colonial, the most historically accurate windows to the original constructions is going to be this one. However, if you want to use some slightly more updated windows, the cats and dogs stuff is adorable. I highly recommend using that pack if you have it. Almost like the pack was sort of created for updated Dutch colonials. Anyway, but if you're going for historical accuracy, you could just add some symmetrical windows like this. We'll add some upstairs as well. And at the back, we're mostly going to have um, doors, glass doors, so I'm not going to worry too much about windows back there right now. Now for our sunroom, because this is quite clearly an addition, a fairly recent addition, I'm going to use some larger windows. I like these because they have the same sort of vibe as the windows we used on the rest of the build, but they're just they're bigger, they're nice. And this little clear old barn door is what I'm going to be using on this section here, as well as coming out of the kitchen. But I'm going to use this one to come out of the living room because I think it's nice. For my front door, I am going a bit more in the updated direction just with this giant glass door because again, I like it. Um, I try to point out when I'm doing things because I like it versus when I'm doing things because it's important to the style, just so you guys like are aware. Um, for example, the double hung shuttered windows is definitely like an original trademark of the style. This door, definitely more modern, uh, but very nice. And then I'm going to use these arches to open up the space inside, although I'll use a slightly smaller one to get into the kitchen, and just a little um, rectangular arch to go from the kitchen into the dining room. Could use a door there as well. Now if you're adding fireplaces, they are going to most likely go on the outer walls and your chimneys are going to be symmetrical. So I'm just going to place one there. I have the kitchen on the other side, so that'll work fine for another chimney. And if your chimneys are ever feeling just a little too big, you can use the bracket keys to scale them down. 
not too bad. Upstairs, I'm prioritizing placing the doors away from this sort of open area here, because that'll give us the most space to add an office or something like that. And I suppose we should finish up the outside before we talk too much about furnishing the inside. Now, as far as siding and colors and textures and stuff for the outside goes, really, you can do whatever it is that feels best to you and for your sims. Bright earthy colors and soft neutrals are pretty common. The brighter earthier tones were used more in the past and the softer neutrals are definitely more contemporary. Uh, but you can go with stone, with brick, um, those are the, like the original construction materials. You can go with the clapboard siding, vertical siding, shingle siding. Sometimes it could be nice to go with a little bit of a mix. For roof texture, any shingles that you find appealing. And with the trim, if you're trying to keep it more old-fashioned, I would go for the beveled out roof trim. And if you're going for something a little bit more modern and contemporary, the square roof trim. Just those strong straight lines um, just read more as a contemporary style as opposed to the softer, more curved lines of the beveled out roof trim, um, which read just more older, more older. Read is older and more weathered. Of course, we have to add some columns. And I'm also going to add a spandrel right above the front door right here. So that should finish up our entry pretty nicely. And I'll do the same thing back here. I wanna make sure I'm adding stairs off the back, pretty helpful. And in, again, newer constructions, you'll actually find a lot of these sort of crosses and diamond patterns throughout the builds. In this cats and dogs pack in particular, not only is it in the fences, but you can even see it in some of the doors like this one. Of course, if you don't have cats and dogs, anything that we've used for the colonials in the past will do just fine. Um, just the more simple fences, the more simple doors and the windows and everything. The colonials all have a lot of things in common, which makes sense because they were built at a similar time with similar materials, similar knowledge, so. Anyway, I'm going to add a brick foundation as well. And I do really like this cats and dogs flooring. So I'm going to use that, uh, but any hardwood will be fine. Sometimes after I add my floors, I like to go back in and find a more complimentary stair color. And now I think we can talk about decorating the inside. Now, traditionally, a like one of the very first Dutch colonials would be two or three rooms on the first floor. Here, we can kind of have like our main sort of entry hall that we split up a little bit. Um, we've split up sort of the dining kitchen area and then we have the living room off to the other side. Also traditionally the upstairs would actually be more of a lofted area much like we saw in the salt box. So if you're interested in learning how to do that I highly recommend checking out that video which I will link here as well as at the end of the video. That one was a lot of fun it turned out really cute. Inside as far as wallpapers and paints go bright earthy colors or soft neutrals once again. This sort of beadboard is really fun and that can really add some more beachy vibes which is quite common for homes of the style to have. You could bring in in some of that brick or stick with more traditional paneling or just paint. I'm going to use these tiles in the bathrooms because I can. And let's actually talk about furnishing the bathrooms. Now this one on the main floor here could totally just be a half bath, but if we want any sort of window, we could either grab something small like this and place it up high, or we could do the same like shuttered window and just have it be closed. I'm just going to do a pretty simple bathroom here today, maybe a little bit of decoration in this corner. But then upstairs, the significantly larger bathroom will be a full family bathroom. So having that tub shower combo, especially helpful if you have toddlers or pets. I know double vanities aren't as useful in The Sims as they are in real life because people just brush their teeth wherever, but I do like adding them to family bathrooms, especially if it's more than two bedrooms using the same bathroom. All right, let's talk about the kitchen though. Actually, I'm going to use the same tile for the kitchen because I can. And I'm going to go with the escargot counter again just because I like it for these older style builds. You can do whatever makes sense for you. I'm not going for anything too extravagant in the kitchen here. It is largely a walkthrough sort of space. However, if you wanted more space in the kitchen, you could either expand the whole home, just expand this room a bit, get rid of or shrink one or both of these arches. Shrink both, not get rid of both. That would be difficult um, to cook. All right, I think we're ready to talk about the landscaping. Granted, this is a bit of a smaller lot, so it's pretty tight, but oh well. Now we do have this gate that comes with cats and dogs, but of course it is two tiles wide, so it will not actually fit here, which is kind of a bummer. So I'm going to pick a smaller gate. And now let's talk about actual plants and landscaping. This is not a very large or a very fancy Dutch colonial, so I'm not going to go too crazy with the landscaping. Um, but if you had a huge one, like some of the builds that actually come with this world, you could definitely go way more over the top with the landscaping. For me today though, I think I want a tree out front. I also really like these hostas. Um, they scale down really well and you can hold alt to place more exactly. Mix up swatches and sizes for more texture and variety. And don't forget to have some fun with it. It is your build after all. I like matching the rock colors to the colors of the world and it looks like our rocks around here are quite gray. So I'm going to switch up to this more gray swatch. Now for terrain paint, we're going to start with a soft dirt brush and start going under all of our plants. We're going to mark out a path 
Don't forget to get under your foundation as well. And I know this yard is a bit cramped, but like, look at where we are. You don't want your animals getting out of the yard here. All right, once you have your paths laid down with dirt, you can switch to a slightly smaller, more firm brush and then grab your gravel or whatever else you may want and then paint on top of the dirt with your actual path texture. And all that's gonna do is give it a nice soft blended edge right into the ground, which is great. If you really want to, you can take a very soft small brush and go under the fence as well. It kinda acts like shading. That's what I have for a Dutch Colonial today. Let's do a quick little recap. The most iconic part of a Dutch Colonial is this roof style. The roof style is so iconic that it has been more or less pilfered and stuck onto a whole bunch of other homes and then those homes get to be called Dutch Colonials even if they're not. Anyway, but really this roof line is what is going to sell your build as a Dutch Colonial. Other things that you want to remember is to keep it fairly symmetrical. Of course you can add on, but the main core of the build should be relatively symmetrical. You can stick with that two or three room ish separation downstairs. Of course, I ended up adding a couple of walls, you know, like a bathroom I thought would be really handy. So we added one of those and then separated the dining area out from the kitchen. But you can still see how it's sort of originally, if this was an old home, um, would have been sort of like three rooms. We added on the sunroom over here and a handful of smaller bedrooms upstairs. Again, if you want to go for more of an open lofted second story, I highly recommend checking out the salt box colonial, which goes into that in a little more detail. Um, but you can easily apply it to whatever build. Chimneys should be toward the ends on either side, and really you can make this build as large or as small as you want. One last pitch for that Pinterest board in the video description um, for floor plans, reference images, all sorts of good stuff. And that's what I have for you guys today. Now, here's the thing. Unfortunately, this is going to be the last video I'm going to put out for a while. Um, it's not really a secret, like I don't talk about it a lot because it doesn't make sense to, but I have assorted health issues. And sometimes I swear it's like they decide to all flare up at once and just see who can make me cry first. Um, so I may be more or less out of commission for a while. This video is definitely lower energy, you can probably tell. Um, but I wanted to give you guys one last video this month. So grand finale, Dutch Colonial. But yeah, that's why this video is more low key and out very late. Um, <laughs> but yeah, happy Halloween guys. Hopefully this was more of a treat than a trick. And if you're going trick-or-treating tonight, um, obviously I'm not going to be able to go, so what are you guys dressing up as? I'd love to know. I need some ideas for next year. If you missed any videos in this series, I highly recommend you check them out in this playlist over here. Building like a nerd, I go just into way too much detail about each build style, where it came from, why it's important, what's important, all that stuff. And I highly recommend checking out the Saltbox Colonial as well. It's another colonial style that really stands out based solely on its roof shape. And it has a few other similar characteristics to the Dutch Colonial as well. So if you like this one, you'll probably like that one. Thank you so much for making October such an incredible month. We blew past our 500 subscriber goal by over 100, um, which I genuinely never expected. So thank you so, so much for building with me today. And I hope to be back building with you again, um, not too long from now. Bye.